bring on the hate. Nah, I'm just kidding. But I know like everybody's opinion is gonna be different about this. If you've been around the interwebs lately, you know that tier lists are kind of a big thing. So I thought I would do a tier list for electric guitar brands. Let me just preface this with a couple of things. First off, I think any of the brands on this list, you could have a guitar by one of these companies and make a complete career with these guitars. It's really tough to find a guitar that's absolute crap nowadays if you're buying it from a, a reputable source. So I'm just saying that. I don't think any of these brands are bad, but I do think that there should be an F tier. So there is gonna be a bell curve that will be everything from F all the way up to A and then the S, you know, the untouchable. So um, let me know what you think as I go through these. Obviously everybody's opinions are gonna be different. One thing I did ha have as like a prerequisite for this is I had to have experience with the brands that I picked. That's why if you don't see a brand on here that you like, it's because I haven't played with them all. And I've owned probably 45 or 50 guitars and I worked in a music store for five years. So I've probably, I played thousands of guitars. So to me, I think this is a well-rounded list. There's the objective like experience that I've had and then there's subjective for what I like too. So take it with a grain of salt. Let me know your comments below what you think about each brand or what you think the best or worst brands are for electric guitar. It just started to rain outside so uh, that might get picked up in the audio but I really don't care. It's a nice day. I'm keeping the windows open. Okay, I'm gonna start off on F and again, it's gonna be very bell curvy just because when you rank stuff like this, I think that's just one of an important fun factor. Probably the worst guitars that I've ever played in my life are Dean guitars and that's a really general, big generalization. When I'm thinking about all of these brands, I'm thinking about them as a whole, all the way down from their cheapest guitars, all the way up to their most expensive guitars. And their cheap guitars are terrible. That's just my personal opinion from experience. I know they do make nicer stuff and I've played some of their nicer stuff and it's good. I like their uh, more expensive guitars, but in general, that one kind of gets the worst grade for me, even though I don't think they're, they're bad guitars overall. Uh, next one, and this is gonna be a little bit controversial, is BC Rich. I know in the 80s they used to be really nice guitars, but I'm, again, I'm thinking of like, if I go to a big guitar store and grab three BC Riches off the wall and play them, what's my overall impression gonna be on them? And a lot of their cheaper stuff, like the finish, fit and finish on them is not great, but a lot of their more expensive stuff is still nicer, but it's not like it used to be in the late 80s uh, for BC Rich. This one kind of breaks my heart because I really like old, USA made Jacksons. I think they're really good guitars. In fact, I want uh, a, a Jackson King V. That's like one of the guitars that's on my list, the USA made one. But like if I, again, if I were to go pick up three Jacksons in a store today, that I would probably say that I would not be surprised if I was like, I, I'm really not too impressed with these guitars. So for what that's worth, but that make that kind of puts a knife in my heart because back in the day when I was a kid, really into metal and stuff. I thought Jackson's were like the be all end all of guitars. This next one is very kind of split or divisive and I'll tell you why. Squire is D tier to me only because I'm looking at the brand as a whole. I think the classic vibe stuff, vibe stuff is more like B, but when I think about bullets and other like affinity strats, that kind of brings the average down to where it's in the D tier list for me. So if you're thinking about the brand as a whole, I would put it in D just because the bullets are like down here for F to me and then the classic vibe stuff up here is is more on like the B tier list to me and I'm, I'm probably gonna get a lot of flack for that one, but that's okay. Next is Epiphone. And the reason this one is solo is because I have played a lot, a lot of Epiphones and I've seen a lot of really um, consistent uh, quality control issues with them overall like i don't think they sound bad i don't think they're uncomfortable but i have seen a lot of inconsistent quality control of them and that's the reason they get d tier to me if it wasn't for for that they would, they would be at least c all right next is schecter and i don't know like the, i don't their quality control is better than epiphone i think they they make good guitars but for some reason the vibe for me is just a little stale i think their components are really good as far as that goes but it's just like going out to a, like a mass Chain, food chain and having a hamburger versus uh you know going out and sourcing all the stuff and making like a nice burger at home on your own this is like the generic middle of the road good quality guitar especially if you're into metal and humbucker type stuff i think not to say they don't make great single coil stuff too but that's where that one sits for me the next one is kind of in the same boat like i could use the exact same description for uh esp and I did have a bad experience with the ESP. I bought actually two ESPs. I bought. I had to return them both to uh, an online company, and it was uh, one of the like four or five hundred dollar ones, Strat version. 
the electronics were not wired correctly. There was something really wrong with them, so I had to send it back. And then the, the one after that had a dead fret. And um, it was unfortunate because I really liked the way they felt, but again, quality control issue. And I know some of the nicer stuff that they make and the more custom shop stuff is like really nice stuff, but I'm talking about stuff you'd grab off the wall in a guitar store, right? And um, one thing I should mention about this list too is I am leaving out any kind of boutique builders where you would pay over, I don't know, five or $6,000 for guitar. Next. Uh, the only reason this one isn't a C tier list, Godin, is because, I don't know, it's it's just like a mojo or a vibe thing. I think they're really good quality guitars, but when I pick it up, it's not really inspiring or like orga organic feeling. I just got all snobby on you. But that's where it is to me. I don't think it's a quality control issue. I think it's just a vibe issue for me. So that's a more personal thing than it is. That could easily be B, B tier for you. If it's an option, especially for the price, Godin makes good, really good guitars for the price. I owned one of the um, uh, the ACS multi uh nylon string guitars. It was great. On to B. Yamaha makes everything under the sun, so they really know manufacturing. So I think their manufacturing is very consistent, even on their more inexpensive products. I think they make really solid offerings that are really well thought through. Uh, especially on acoustic guitars, but we're talking about electric guitars here. The Pacifica series for like $150, $200 guitar, brand new. You, I really don't think you can go wrong with it. I've owned quite a few. I have a Yamaha sitting right here. Uh, the build quality on the components on it are very good, especially for the price. One thing that's really underrated are probably the most underrated guitar of all time to me is the Yamaha USA Pacificas. If you've never played one of those or seen it, just insane guitar. Next, Gretsch. Their um, high-end stuff is amazing, and the Electromatic stuff, what you get for the money. I know a lot of these guitars are built in the same factories. That's not something you have to be like, oh, I need all these uh, guitars are built in the same spot. I know, I'm just talking about my like, personal opinion and vibe. I like Gretsch guitars. I have a Gretsch Electromatic sitting right there that I got for like $450 used, and that's Canadian, so that's like 350, 400 bucks US. Really great guitar, good vibe, good feel. Like obviously you can tell vibe is a really important part of things to me. Next, and I, I would have put these guitars in C tier probably five or seven years ago, but a lot of the stuff they're coming out with, Ernie Ball Music Man, is really good. It's like their quality has always been really good, but like they're getting a little more soul or mojo in a lot of the guitars they're coming out with, so I really like them. I've never owned one personally, but I've played a crap ton of them. I would love to own a Music Man uh, Luke. I, it's just because I'm a big Steve Luke the fan. I really like the feel of those guitars, and I don't own a guitar with active pickups, EMG, so it'd be a good opportunity for that. Next one, and here is one of the bombs that I'm sure you all are waiting for, Gibson B tier. And there, the reason for this is inconsistency through eras with quality control, and a couple of inherent design flaws that make Gibson look awesome but give it a, a lot of tuning stability issues. Like for example, that Les Paul over there, Les Paul headstock, it creates tuning issues. But that's one of my favorite guitars, even though there are some issues with it because of the angle of the string break of the nut. And like, I don't have a problem with the quality control on my guitar. I think it's 2013 or 14. I know a lot of people do. And they're turning things around right now. But if it wasn't for the inherent design and the inconsistency throughout eras, the Gibson to me would be A, a tier, just because I love the tone, I love the vibe. Actually, same exact thing with Fender. I think uh, not inherent design flaws, but quality control with Fender. Yeah, I would say that's the main thing. Quality control with Fender takes um, it down from an A to a B tier to me, just because I've played some really expensive Fender guitars, even ones that are set up really well that I'm like, man, this is not, <laughs> this does not feel good. And I've played some really kind of inexpensive Fenders that I've been like, man, this is, just feels amazing. So. That's gonna be a controversial one to know. Where would you put Fender and Gibson together there? Ibanez, and this one, uh, this was a close call. Actually, you know what, I'm a... <sighs> Let's do it. Let's go ahead and make our bell curve peak at the B area. I like Ibanez guitars. I've owned probably four or five of them over the years. I think they, they do a really consistent job. Some of their stuff is a little bit soulless or vibeless, kind of like the Schecter ESP stuff, but I think with their innovation and all the models that I like from them, personally, I think that kicks them up from a C to a B tier. And it's good build quality. Like I, I have rarely ever seen any quality control issues with Ibanez personally from the guitars I've played. Tom Anderson, I've never played a Tom Anderson that I don't like, and this is the closest thing to a boutique guitar on this list. I really don't, like, you can buy them at guitar shops and fairly readily, 
and you can get used ones for you know under under three grand sometimes so that's why i'm including it here but it's like if a strat was like more handmade and you know just a lot of attention to detail and a perfect strat was made well maybe not perfect but it's it's its, its own thing but i really like how much i'm just really impressed with the quality and i've never picked one up that i didn't like Dusenberg. i've played three of these guitars and every one of them i've played have been like a Gretsch on steroids just really nice they have their own sound you may or may not like them but like as far as build quality and cool factor vibe soul all that stuff i think they're a really good guitars you might they might not be for you as far as style but you know that's a personal thing prs guitars are the closest thing to like violins like a nice stradivarius that i've experienced I think they're really consistent overall. Yeah, I've played some that I didn't like just because of the, the vibe or the specs on the actual models, but I just spent $2,400 on a guitar and that $2,400 went to a PRS. Like I don't, didn't get any discounts on it or anything like that, but that's what I ended up choosing for something that wasn't boutique out of all of these brands. The fit what I like best for whatever it's worth. I really like PRS guitars. I like their consistency. I like their design. Now, S tier, obviously, you know, Sir guitars are gonna go here. And I kind of said this for Tom Anderson, but I really think this solidly for Sir guitars. I think they took everything that Fender was doing and just took all the inconsistencies and really put a lot of attention into detail and made some guitars that every time I pick up a Sir guitar, I'm like, that's how a guitar should play. That's how it should sound. They're getting to where they have more models that span a wider range of things. So they're getting um, a few more inexpensive models. I mean, not inexpensive relative to like five or four grand. They're getting a few more inexpensive models. And if you can pick up a used one, even they are just incredible guitars. So that's it for this tier list. I know this is probably one of the fastest ways to make enemies on the internet, but let me know what you think in the comments below, what brands should be on here that weren't on here, what brands are on here that you think shouldn't be on here. Again, I just left this up to the guitars that I personally have experience with, so it'll be a little bit more fair. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinion. Talk to you later. I just wanna quickly add that this is an electric only brand list. I didn't think it would be fair to lump all acoustic and electric brands into one list. Uh, so if this video goes well and you like it, maybe we'll do a list for acoustic too.